Trigonometric inverses exchange the angular input with the ratio of the sides, so you're swapping input with output. The steps for finding all possible values. First, locate the radian measure on the unit circle, and then find all coterminal angles by adding 2 pi times n, where n is an element of the set of integers, so positives and negatives. To find all possible values of the inverse of cosine of the square root of 3 on 2, we have to consider where the square root of 3 on 2 is an x-coordinate on the unit circle. Because the radian measure of square root of 3 on 2 is positive and cosine deals with the x-axis, we're looking at quadrants 1 and 4. Each have a ordered pair with an x-coordinate of square root of 3 on 2. This ordered pair occurs when the angle measure is pi on 6 plus any co-terminal angles of full revolutions that would land you back on that same terminal side. And the radian measure for the other terminal side that also lands at a point with an x-coordinate of square root of 3 on 2 is 11 pi on 6 plus any co-terminal angles for n in the element of the set of integers. As you can see, the inverse of cosine is not a function. When I have a single input of square root of 3 on 2, I don't know which radian angle measure that it should output. So that's why I have to find all possible values. And that's why when evaluating trig functions, you have to restrict the domain. And when we do that, we'll capitalize the first letter to show that this is a subset and that we're dealing with a well-defined function. And as you can see on the right with sine, because it is going to be positive in the first quadrant and negative in the fourth quadrant, it is going to be this span of radians that will allow us to have a, a unique set of relationships between the input and the output to define the function. For cosine, because that deals with the x-coordinates, they're positive in the first quadrant and negative in the second. So again, we have this predict predictable map for any given input of a here, the, a ratio of the side lengths. We're going to always get out a unique angular measure theta. And then with tangent, we can actually take any input because it deals with the ratio of the y on the x, and it will always come out with something that is between but not including negative pi on 2 and positive pi on 2. The reason why we can't include at the uh, axis values is because here at the top, the uh, x coordinate is 0 and the y coordinate is 1, and so that would be 1 on 0, which is undefined. The way these are pronounced are arc sine, arc cosine, all one word, and arc tangent. So these are not read as the inverse of sine, and we use the lingo of arc in front of the trig function name to communicate that the first letter is capital and that there is a restricted domain so that these are functions. Now using these Restrictions that make sense based on our understanding of the unit circle and wanting to have positive and negative so that these are different, making this a function, same here and here. We'll use that to find each inverse trig function. We have to give our answer in both radians and degrees. So when we look at the arc cosine of negative square root of 3 on 2, we have to realize that with the capital C, that this is going to have the following restriction on the range. So we're looking at just the x values along this range. And then we have to make sure that the input satisfies the domain restriction. So the square root of 3 is 1.42. And that divided by a number that's bigger will ensure that it is a fraction between 0 and 1 and the negative. So then it fits in between here. So from the unit circle, 5 pi on 6 has a negative x coordinate of negative square root of 3 on 2, which corresponds to 150 degrees, and this pi implies radians as the unit. Looking at the arc sine of 1, let's consider its restricted domain and range. 
the domain is the same as the cosines restriction, and then the range this time is going to be from the top of the unit circle and then clockwise to the bottom of the unit circle. One occurs as a Y coordinate within this range restriction on the unit circle at the top, pi on two radians, which is equivalent to 90 degrees. Now when you look at the next example of arc cosine of negative two, that negative two is outside of the domain restriction. And since it doesn't meet that restriction, we say that this is undefined, and if you put that into your calculator, you'll get the same result. Now that we understand that trig functions can have restrictions on domain and range, when solving trigonometric equations, sometimes the given restrictions, like in this case, may conflict with the domain of the inverse of the trig function. So the steps are to find the value of theta using an inverse trig function. So I want to swap this output with the input to release theta and isolate it. And that's going to be the answer if the restrictions match the domain of the inverse. Like we see in this first example, we know that sine is restricted between the top of the unit circle and the bottom of the unit circle clockwise. So between negative pi on 2 and pi on 2. So once we find this inverse trig function, we will arrive at our answer. That won't be the case when we get to this one. Start off by using the inverse function of sine with an input of the ratio of the side length of 0.4 to find the radian angle measure. In this case, degrees is, works as well to define the restriction of the domain. But notice this is not a capital S. We are using the provided restriction. So that's how these problems differ from the ones before. Putting this into the calculator, you get 23.6 degrees. And since the provided restrictions match the restrictions for making sine a function on the unit circle, then we have arrived at our answer. Looking at the next example, we'll go through step one. We find that the inverse tangent of 2.1 is 64.5. Now that is not falling within the given restrictions for theta. But also I want to note that the domain for this, remember, can be um, any number for tangent, and for sine it has to be between negative 1 and 1, so you have to make sure that's legitimate as well. So now we need to move to step 2, which is to find the equivalent angle measure for the trig function that satisfies the given restrictions. So take, for example, the sine of 30 degrees equals 1 half in the first quadrant, but it also, in the second quadrant, is equal to the sine of 150 degrees. So here we want to find an equivalent theta measure that, uh, so this one here is equal to the uh, first quadrant value, but from all students take calculus, t in the third quadrant also means that tangent is positive in the third quadrant, and the third quadrant is where theta is supposed to be restricted. I've provided a visual of what I was explaining, that 64.5 degrees makes a terminal side of the angle fall in the first quadrant, which doesn't fit the restrictions on theta. So instead, I realize that tangent is also positive here because it's the y coordinate divided by the x coordinate, and they're both negative, and that creates a ratio that's positive. So I need to get from this terminal side to this terminal side where this gap here is also 64.5 degrees but it's also 180 degrees around, so that sum gives me a final answer of 244.5 degrees, satisfying the given restriction for theta.